Hello and welcome to Your Year in Tech, an extra special video roundup of all of the highlights from 2014. We saw fintech go from strength to strength. Hundreds of British startups raised record amounts of funding. We had high profile interviews and reports from all across the world. We'll be covering this and much, much more in our special edition of the show. 2014 saw the launch of so many new incubators, accelerators, competitions and pitch events, but one in particular stood out for us. When superstar entrepreneur Richard Brunson invited Britain's rising stars to his home for a pitching event. Here's the recap. Hundreds have battled it out to become one of the six talented startups on stage in the finals who are now pitching to some of Britain's best entrepreneurs. Judges include founder of Jack Wills, Not on the High Street and Moonpig.com and of course Sir Richard Brunson himself. There's a people's vote as well as the judges' vote, and the winning startups will receive prize money, invaluable mentoring, and a coveted spot in the Accelerator Academy. Okay, the winner is... Boxhug. In March, the entire Tech City News team relocated to sunny Austin, Texas for South by Southwest. We went as part of the Hackney House mission, representing some of the best talent in East London. There was networking, there was partying, and even some historic news was made. The city is buzzing as thousands upon thousands of festival goers descend upon Austin for South by Southwest 2014. If you're in Austin for South by Southwest and you want to see some of what the UK has to offer, then head down to Hackney House. We're expecting over 3,000 people through the doors this week for great speeches and to see some of the best British products. And we have our very own Tech City News TV studio so that we can interview the movers and shakers of South by Southwest 2014. Until today, Austin had 12 sister cities. And who did they choose for their 13th? Only a little known London borough called Hackney, which further proves how much is going on right on our doorstep. The mayor of Austin announced the partnership at Hackney House in front of a packed crowd, talking about the exciting possibilities for both cities. We are officially open for business. It was probably the most overhyped launch of the year. London is using Glass and Google Glass. Take off their Google Glass internet addiction from Google Glass. It can read your mind. Not a week went by without news on Google's latest bit of wearable tech, but lately we've been asking what's happened to this ill-fated device. We haven't spotted a glass hole in months, and Google's being suspiciously quiet. Is Glass 2014's biggest flop? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Throughout the year, we brought you high-profile interviews from the biggest names, including Boris Johnson, Brian Cox, Jimmy Wales, and New York's Michael Bloomberg. The next job creator is tech. And if people are going to have the dignity of being self-sufficient and have jobs and be able to enjoy life, they're going to have to have jobs, and those jobs are going to be created in the tech world. And so people have to get the skill sets required to fill those jobs. At the same time, we've got to make sure we have immigration and bring in people from around the world with new ideas that will create the jobs themselves. Immigration was one of our biggest themes this year, and to mark it, we launched the International Hall of Fame Awards, recognizing international contribution to our tech sector. Immigration often is very good for this country. It's a really exciting thing to be uh, honoring the non-Brits who are contributing to the industry because there's so many of us and I think it's, it's one of the things that makes London so great. It is really, really, really touching. I mean, such an amazing group of people to be part of. Forecasters at Oxford Economics say that the city's tech sector will probably grow by more than 5% a year in the decade to come. Tech clusters, to make it work, bring people from different worlds together. And London has been doing that for time and memorial. Well, I think the government's got to send out the message loud and clear that Britain is open for business. We should stop obsessing about building valleys and we should start building bridges between these valleys. The awards are part of London's first ever Technology Week. Here's a reminder. It's finally here. London's first ever technology week kicked off in style with New York's Michael Bloomberg and Mayor Boris Johnson opening the week of over 200 events. When it came to fundraising, we saw record after record being smashed. Our top investment of the year was high-end online pawn shop Borrow, who raised a whopping $112 million. 
followed closely behind by fintech startup Funding Circle, who raised $65 million in July. And at number three was Silicon Roundabout's very own Huddle, raising $51 million for their Series D. You kind of have this moment of jubilation, you know, when, when, when you see the, like the cash hit the bank accounts, um, and it's like, yes, and then you realize, you know, it's kind of like more money, more problems. As soon as you have the money, you've got to start working with it. So you begin to think about all the great plans you've been making around hiring, execution, marketing spend. You've actually got to start putting those in place. And so it's actually in many ways a bit of a headache, but you know, it's a good headache to have. In November, the US and European tech elite decamped to Dublin for Web Summit. Here's Alex with a recap. It's back, it's bigger than ever. This is the Dublin Web Summit. Over 20,000 people have descended upon the Irish capital for three days of superstar talks, startup showcases, networking and much more. This year the team behind the summit upped their game with the event doubling in size, attracting celebrities including U2's Bono, Tony Hawk and TV's Eva Longoria. Traditionally, the sexism in these fields is still prevalent. I did my, my master's thesis on specifically Latinas, Latina women, in STEM fields, whether it's science, technology, engineering, or math. And uh, I found that a lot of them were, are continually, even today, discouraged to go into these fields. The Elevator Pitch is our premier competition for startups, and this year it was bigger than ever. For the third series, we took our 12 finalists to one of Canary Wharf's highest skyscrapers for the most exhilarating pitch of their lives. Series 4 saw our finalists pitch in an iconic halo cab speeding across the capital. Elevator pitch startups have now raised over $50 million in funding. The series was topped off with our annual Elevator Pitch Awards. Here are some highlights from the evening. We're at this amazing venue, uh, surrounded by startups that are all doing such amazing things, and to be recognized here is, is, is mind-blowing, it's fantastic. I feel like I'm at a Hollywood celebrity event with the uh, movers and shakers in town. You get a real sense of what's coming down the line and of the energy that is just here in Shoreditch and I think it's great. It's just important to give very early stage companies a chance and an audience and to pitch and to try things out. And this just gives us a real platform to stand upon and to say this is what we do, this is who we are and this is why we're awesome. It gives a huge amount of uh, legitimacy and credibility both with our clients uh, and within the wider tech community. Absolutely brilliant evening and great to, to showcase some uh, superb businesses. Applications for the next series of the Elevator Pitch open in January. Well, that's it for 2014. Thank you for making it our best year yet. If you want to read more of the highlights of 2014, then check out our print edition. Subscribe on techcitynews.com to have your free copy delivered to your door. And finally, to end off our final episode of the season, we leave you with a special fintech Christmas poem by the brilliant Ben Goldsmith. This has been your year in tech. Have a wonderful Christmas and a fabulous new year. We'll see you in 2015. It was the night before Christmas and all through London town, every creature was stirring. And please note this down, that the word on the street is, don't take it from me, that 2014 was the year for financial technology. So as you snuggle neath the sheets and fill up your stockings, let us take you on a journey, both delightful and shocking. The year in fintech, 2014. The best year that fintech has ever seen. The movers and shakers were strutting their stuff. And if Apple's payment service wasn't enough, PayPal and eBay split and now tread a separate course. 13 years together, a fintech Divorce. When you're rushing through the shops amongst the huffing and puffing in search of a fairy for the tree or a turkey for stuffing, your homeward journey will restore a calm attitude as contactless payments are now active on the tube. As the dinner table becomes laden with crackers and candles and condiments, fintech is now on the menu in the Houses of Parliament. With the launch of Innovate Finance in August this year, fintech's voice is now in the government's ear. Before you fill your lungs for a carol or a cheery Christmas song, remember Barclays and Startup Bootcamp have now entered the throng. Joining Level 39 will soon turn two years old. Startups take heed, FinTech favours the bold. Like the wise men who brought gifts after following yonder star, or the customary fiver in their card from your grandma. Transferwise Funding Circle and Nutmeg received the gift of investment. And as fintech keeps growing, it could prove money well spent. Bitcoin is a Christmas present that won't have you yawning. 
especially as you don't know what it will be worth in the morning. But it might just change how the world uses money, and here are the facts. It's made investors get rich and Silk Road collapse. So there you have it, the year in fintech wrapped up in a poem. So go forth and enjoy the presents caroling, turkey and snowing, safe in the knowledge that fintech has scaled new heights. Happy Christmas to you all, and to all a good night.